I would like to think if I had a Marvel movie on the line, I could put down the cheeseburger for a couple months. But you never, I mean, it's, it's also just at a certain point, you, like what you were saying earlier, you, you crack. Like even if people always tell you to meal prep, that I tried every meal delivery service, everyone that you cook yourself, that you just put it in the microwave. And they all sucked. Some of them, yeah, most of them sucked. So they all I, sucked. Most, some of them are okay, but I don't know what I want to eat for dinner tonight two weeks ago. No. So I would let most of them, I threw away thousands of dollars because I didn't know what I, like, I'm just not the person, I, and I could, but like I, I couldn't have chicken breast, rice, and broccoli every every day for every meal. It's, I wish I, I wish I could, but I'll, I'll just, I'll lose, I'll go crazy. That's when I'll go crazy and I'll just end up in a, in a drive through like I'll just I'll kind of have, like I'll snap a little bit and just I mean, end listen, up. man. There's a thousand ways to get healthy, and they don't all require meal prep. We just get lazy. Mm-hmm. We have we have busy lifestyles, and we don't know. Listen, I know twenty heavyweight people that don't even know where to start to lose weight. They don't know. People don't. They really don't. And I mean. Listen, you do. Okay. That, Push yeah, yourself yeah. away from the fucking table and stop eating the Briar's ice cream, okay, at night. That's that's the simple way. But for some people, that seems out of reach. And I was one of those people. For yeah, me, to me walk too. walk into Weight Watchers and go, this is going to work. I was. I thought I was lying to myself. Yep. I, Dude, you told you were on me to go to Weight Watchers for years. I went to the last Weight Watchers meeting in L.A. before the pandemic. I went, and like the next day, everything closed, and I was so fucking happy because I wouldn't have to go to Weight I gotta Watchers. Find, I got to find the Weight Watchers meeting around here because I like those meetings. And I could see them being very helpful. I think when I was that big, the problem was like it was like the only thing giving me happiness. I'm like, so wait, I'm I'm... I'm going to I'm going to not eat it and then what like for what like at cuz when you were saying people don't know what to do people can make you like you can make a mistake like the italian ice like oh this is two servings I think everyone knows what to do you just I don't want to have salad like we, like last night at that place there were 40 things I would have had rather have had than the greek salad that I had like, now granted I had fried shrimp before and we had we got so Messed up. I had croissant French toast for dessert, but <laughs> when I ordered, when I ordered originally, I made a good choice. But it's just you don't want to in the moment. You're just like fuck it. I want a steak. I want a burger. I don't. And the it's like sort of like working. Like when you go from college to a job, and you're like, wait, this is every day. Like it's like the first week of a diet, you're pretty good usually. You get motivated. You lose a little weight, and then three months in, you're like, you hit a plateau, and you're having cauliflower rice again you're like fuck it i'm gonna i'm gonna gain it back anyways let's just fucking enjoy it and then and then you do that for a little bit and then suddenly the pants you bought don't fit anymore and you're depressed so there's a happy medium in life yeah and you can eat healthy for 10 days and then one day have a fucking carvel shake and you can't beat yourself up over it because you're doing the work it's not like i sit here every night like Typical America, how they want you to do, and just eat a bag of chips every night. If it was up to us, we'd eat a bag of chips every night. That's how we were With a pint of ice cream, yeah. That's how we were raised. That's how, you know, it's nighttime, a pint of ice cream, whatever the fuck it is. But we're never raised to eat an apple. You know, these are little things. I, I told my wife, I go, I was having a hard time just picking up a piece of fruit in the daytime. I just have a hard time. I'll do it for three days in a row, then I won't do it for a week. It's just, let's just cut the fruit up in the mornings. Don't cut it an hour before. Let's chop it up in the morning before we eat breakfast, and I incorporate a a bowl of fruit. I've always loved fruit for breakfast. When I go to a fucking place, and they give you two eggs and bacon, and they give you that little cup of (laughs) petrified fruit, I eat that petrified fruit first, especially if it's got like blueberries or raspberries in it. But to get back to the other thing, and it is economic. Mm-hmm. You know, not a, it's not, listen, go buy a steak today. Go get a steak today. You're going to be in shock. You're really going to be in shock. Whether you go to Manalapan Diner or whether you go to Char Steakhouse, you're going to be in shock by the sticker. You're going to, steaks are high and so am I. It's <laughs> in the air tonight. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Joey's Grocery Store. So, <laughs> steaks are high. Steaks yeah, are high. Everything Eggs are high. high. So what does a family do? They have to resort to 
the Boston Market dinner deal. Which ain't bad. Which ain't bad. I've been there. Dog, for years, I ate Boston Market turkey for Thanksgiving. Yeah. Okay? Because for a guy like me, as a single guy with a girlfriend, uh, I'm not going to make the fucking turkey. Okay? that And Boston Market turkey is turkey's turkey. Turkey's fucking turkey. Okay? No calories. High in protein. It puts you to sleep. You know? But for me... I don't know if, if Boston Market is even considered fast food. I don't know. I know the chicken is horrible. It, they started yeah. using cancer chickens from fucking Bolivia or something. That, that's where I'd go when I was tricking, when I was trying to trick myself thinking I was eating healthier. I was like, I'll go to Boston Market. But then, the, yeah, the, yeah you're, you're like, the problem isn't the chicken or the turkey. It's the, the mashed problem, potatoes yeah, the, and, and the, 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 corn. the yams with the right, marshmallows the on top. That cream, that cream spinach. Absolutely. Oh, but it's... There's ways to do it. There's ways to do it, but it's it's very tough. Even to be honest, even fast food is expensive now. So like what holy shit. Yeah. A couple of weeks ago I got up on a Saturday morning. I got up a little early. My wife was sleeping. I said, Let me be a good husband and go over to McDonald's and just get three egg McMuffins. Yeah. That's it. Three egg McMuffins ain't gonna kill you. The, the points are low. No, it's a real egg. They it's, crack it. Yeah, it's like 12 points on there or something, eight points. Not that bad. You don't eat the potato pancake. Oh, I do. And I drink a little bit of the orange juice. Four ounces. Nah, you know, you're trying to. Right. You're trying. That's not the point of the story. Point of the story was I got three breakfasts and two cinnamon rolls. One for Mercy. Oh. Have you had the cinnamon rolls from McDonald's? Yes. They're the best fucking cinnamon rolls you've ever had in your life. They don't skimp on that white cream. Yeah. You ever get a cinnamon roll? They always skimp on the white cream. You ever make them at home? Pillsbury always gives you that package oh. that don't have enough cream for all of them. You're like, motherfucker. Oh. They give you just enough and shit like this. I, I would be I would become like a, a mathematician. Like I would scoop just the same oh, amount it and then I would crazy. drag it on the pan. I would I would take it like it was a chip with dip and I would scoop the cup. I but the ones at McDonald's aren't bad. You Dog, get them when they're hot. I'm telling you. If, if they're hot, everybody yeah. went down the drain. Like if you go to any place in Jersey, any supermarket you walk in has that little tray with the cinnamon rolls or they got the other the muffins, ones, pineapple. Where when you muffins. walk in, those bags, oh, fuck that big. And they're not bad, but they're fuck great. It, McDonald's, fucking whatever. Anyway, how much was it? Thirty-seven dollars. Fuck you. Thirty-seven fucking for three dollars. egg sandwiches and th two. Yeah, no. I told my show my wife the receipt. I was like, dog, it's gonna be a cold winter, gentlemen, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah. I'm not sitting here just dropping stupid shit. I'm telling you that don't take much. That restaurant we went to last night. I got bad news for you. That motherfucker's packed seven days a week. Yeah, good stuff. There's always going to be and people last there. Night, there wasn't a lot of people. I mean, no, but there it was people there. There were people, but it wasn't slammed. That fucking gay guy saying happy birthday five happy birthdays. Oh, I last hated night. that fucking. We were dying. I even told the guy, you like the official birthday singer because gay people love birthdays. I don't know what it's about <laughs> gay men. They cause they have light on the feet. They wear like the white socks and they float up and down and shit. This guy was so happy every time because he came out of the back like, oh, I'll be, you ever see uh, The Birdcage? Yeah, yeah. Oh, I love that movie. Oh, what's Robin the, Williams. What's the other dude that the Spanish made? Oh, oh, yeah, uh, I don't remember his name. Uh, yeah, oh, yeah, please, that's please. That's that, a great movie. That mother, you do, you do not like my Spanish, what? You do not like my Venezuelanness. My heat. <laughs> it's like is Ke what's his name? Is Kieta? Is that him? Some yeah, Hank Azaria. Hank Azaria. But okay. that's what he would do. He would always when they were singing Happy Birthday. He's like Happy Birthday to <laughs> you with the gay voice. Fucking tremendous. That's a great movie, dog. Yeah, Bird Cage is fucking Gene Hackman to see Gene Hackman in the French Connection. Chasing fucking black people and getting hit by cars, and then to see him in fucking. The bird cage. Oh my god, I love all that shit. But just to keep this conversation on track, to talk about when I lived with Josh Wolf, guys, ninety seven to ninety nine. Nah, after after I snorted all the Taco Bell money. <laughs> after after I snorted the Taco Bell money, the shells, the fucking sour cream, after I snorted everything, I went into a deep fucking period. We all were. From the end of 
nine, the beginning of 99 to like the end of 98 to 99 was rough. That one summer, I'll never forget, 98 going into 99 was a rough summer. That's when I used to rob cigarettes from the gas station in the morning and or put cigarettes on the arm. I would steal a pack and put a pack on credit. <laughs> And it's buy one get one free. He just didn't know. And then, I, <laughs> and then I would go to Josh Wolf's, and hopefully he had a turkey burger, or I would wake up Ralphie May, and hopefully he could give me five bucks, and I would walk to Wendy's, and get for five bucks in those days. I get the junior cheeseburger. Mm -hmm. I get the bowl of chili because that I, I needed the most bang for my fucking buck. I got five dollars here, man. I get the bowl of chili and the junior cheeseburger, and I'd fucking get like a large iced tea and I just lurk around the salad bar. Like they always had the salad bar. With when the it was yellow. I lemon. remember, I remember oh my yellow God. Wendy's was a great place. And guys, when I was eating that shit, do you think I was thinking about my health? Do you think I was thinking about the carbohydrate value in this shit? I was just looking to survive. Yeah. I'm doing comedy. When I was on the road early on, I was eating Subway sandwiches. At least I wasn't eating the turkey and all that shit. I was getting veggie and cheese, you know? But I know what it's like to have a veggie and cheese for lunch and have a veggie and cheese for dinner in your car. That's part of doing comedy. That This is it. You wanted it, you got it, okay? <laughs> you wanted it, you got it. Like ACDC said, it's a long way to the top if you want to rock and roll. And this is fucking part of it. And so that was the thing I went on. And then I went to Florida when my apartment got towed and things <laughs> changed after that. And I never stepped fucking foot in Wendy's ever again. I don't blame you. And then over the years, it's always been, I'm like any other body, man. I'm an American. And every once in a while, I want a fucking quarter pounder. Oh, yeah. Every once in a while, I want a quarter pounder. And Red Band, that motherfucker told me that quarter pounders are the only hamburger that McDonald's sells that is really meat. Deal. You have to look this up. Everything else is like meat byproducts and fucking donkey tail. Yeah, they sell it for a dollar four. Yeah, like I, like it can't like, like but those. Yeah, oh, I'll eat the fuck out of some nuggets. I'll but I yeah, those quarter too. those quarter pounders aren't bad. McNuggets are nasty. Yeah, it's, it's 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 chicken hot dogs that are fried. They come with this pink goo that they get formed into the nugget shape. Yeah, but yeah, yeah quarter pounders. I, listen, when you eat McDonald's, you just it's like eating White Castle. You bite into it, you close your eyes, and you say, enjoy. When I go to White Castle, I don't eat 15 burgers. I eat three because that's what I, my conscience can live with. Right. Three double burgers with steamed cheese, the fries, and the fucking Pepsi with the soda, and I eat it, and I don't look back because I know I'm not going to eat it again tomorrow. This is just a situation that happened today. I got, you know, when we moved here, we went to White Castle two times in three months. Ask me if I've been there again. No. Ask my daughter. You want to go to White Castle? Mm. So <laughs> fucking look at you. I'm okay. But, you know, these are the things you do in economic. Yeah. When you're in economic dire situations, you know, when I look at, and I, dog, I'm not here to judge or say anything wrong with that, but when I go into a store that has a family dinner, I kind of like that place. If you know anything about me and my beef with the American family. So any place that I see has like a family bargain, like, you know, Sundays. Yeah, like any like notice. You feed the kids free on Sunday. Oh, perfect. Yeah, I'll go there every Sunday. It's it's my you know what I'm saying? You don't think of going to Nona's, but for them to do that, I support Nona's from time to time because they do that. They, they I'm big on that. If I go to a night like Osteria in Marlboro, it costs you eight dollars to walk in the door that. Okay, it's gonna cost you eight dollars. You're gonna get the best food. You're gonna. It's gonna be fresh. The lettuce is fresh. Everything's fresh. But you're gonna spend eight dollars to walk in. There. Is that the place where they come around with the Parmesan cheese to put it on for yeah. you? It's like it's already grated, and then just some guy with a spoon. Yeah, it's so tremendous. Yeah, that that that's it costs fancy. you eight dollars to fucking. Go. But on a Monday night, when you do a sixteen ninety five burger, which in if you go to the best burger in Jersey, in uh, the stage. It's twenty four dollars for that burger, and it's fucking mind boggling. It's a, it's a fucking sexual experience, okay? When you bite into the cheeseburger at the stage, it's a sexual experience. 